When people ask me how long I've been zero waste, I always wanna say either one or two things. One, I've never been zero waste. Zero waste doesn't exist. There's no such thing as a zero waste person on this planet because that's the truth. That's the truth of it. But I think the way that the zero waste movement was presented, you know, like six plus years ago, which is more of like a goal, something to strive for, something to advocate for. If we go with that definition, then I have been attempting to be zero waste since I was like, a junior in high school, which means for like 12 years, I've been trying to be zero waste. And I, again, still haven't made it there. But regardless of which response I give and which definition I choose to use in the moment, I have been trying to live a zero waste lifestyle for a very long time. And I think zero waste and sustainability should be about a lot more than what we choose to buy. But in terms of what consumer power as individuals, what we have control over, a lot of times that comes down to what we call zero waste swaps. And I'm gonna tell you today, some of the ones that I've used for years that I swear by and I'll also include a few that I just don't think were worth it. If you want to see a part two to this, let me know in the comments and make sure you give this video a like and let's get into the first thing, um, which is a little bit of an uncomfortable topic, but that's okay. We're going to the bathroom. <laughs> One of the brands that I have been using since I believe 2016, so coming up on like six years now, is the toilet paper I use. I find it strange that I talk to a camera in a bathroom so often, but. Here goes. Oh. But yeah, this toilet paper is definitely superior to like every other brand on the market with their sustainability claims. Who gives a crap just surpasses everyone that I have seen and that's why I've stuck with them for over six years now. So this is their typical line. As you can see, it's like very colorful, playful. I always feel like it's cute to have in your bathroom. But the reason this toilet paper is superior for sustainability reasons, because that's slower. That's what we're here to talk about, Shelby, not how cute your toilet paper is in your bathroom. I have always thought Who Gives a Crap is the best because it's made from 100% recycled paper, which to me is the most sustainable way to make toilet paper, not to like grow whole trees and then cut them down and use to, to wipe back there. But on top of them being sustainable in the way that their stuff is made from recycled materials, they've always progressed in trying to be better. So that's why I've continued to use them, right? There are brands out there that claim to be sustainable or they don't really change anything about what they do and they just do the, the greenwashing thing or they pretend to be sustainable and they are not really doing anything progressive to be better with their product. So they've always had like plastic free packaging. This is one of their limited edition uh, papers with mushrooms on it. I'm in love. But they've also added on to being made of recycled materials, to not having plastic packaging, to adding carbon neutral shipping to their list of achievements. And every time I see carbon neutral shipping, I always think, okay, that is like a stopgap, if you will. If you're in the environmental sphere, you know what that word means. But in more layman's terms, it means a band-aid. Carbon neutral shipping is something I think should be coupled with other actions to lower your footprint. Another adorable example of the limited edition collection recently. In addition to all the great things they do for helping the planet, they also help people because they give 50% of their profits to helping make sure everybody has access to toilets, essentially, that's what they care about. Their mission is to make sure that in their lifetime, everybody has access to a toilet because there are so many people in this world that unfortunately don't have that. So this is definitely a swap that I've been using for years. I have tested for years, can fully, fully vouch for. And if you want to try it for yourself, I'll leave a link in the top of the description along with my discount, which I believe is $10 off and free shipping of your first box. Shouts out to Who Gives a Crap for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's talk about something that maybe I bought before, maybe not so worth it. Maybe I'm not so hyped about it as I am my toilet paper, you know what I mean? So this is gonna be really hard for me to say considering uh, I do love these things, but I don't know that these things are worth it. You need to leave. It's not that I don't think these things are particularly useful and like you can't get use out of them, that they're not cool to have and like I haven't gotten a lot of use out of them because I have. Every time I leave the house, the Tiffin is my like container of choice and there's two reasons for that. Number one, it's not breakable um, like glass would be. Well, I guess three reasons. Number two, it's not plastic because putting warm food in a plastic container, like that's what scares me. I don't like that. And third thing is these you can separate. So this one specifically, you can separate into three different categories. I am that person that doesn't like my food to touch. 
Let me know if that's you too. So I definitely use these, but I decided to put them in here as maybe not worth it because these are made of steel and steel has a massive environmental footprint. In terms of like mining from the earth, extracting resources from the earth, um, and also in terms of manufacturing it. Like this is obviously a very hard material. Uh, it takes a lot of energy to create this. To be fair, I have only ever bought, I think two of the Tiffins behind me, this one being the first one I ever bought several years ago. And then I think also not this one, was it this one? It was one of these colored ones that I found uh, from a very small shop when I was traveling. But I think that if we're talking about environmental impact, right, because the whole point of this is to avoid like single use plastics or styrofoam or whatever they give you at a restaurant, you could also definitely take this for like your lunch on the go. That's just never how I've used them. And I think there are definitely alternatives to these for that that's easy enough, especially if you're like taking your food from your house to your work and putting it in the fridge. Like I think a glass container for that is fine. But when you're throwing something in your backpack, walking around downtown before and after you're going out to eat and all that sort of stuff, I think these are good. But if the question is, is it worth it? I just don't, there's no direct life cycle analysis like comparison for this that I can give you, but just from knowing how resource intensive steel is to make and knowing how not really resource intensive single use plastics and styrofoam are to make. I almost think that I can say without any uncertainty that you would have to use this probably thousands of times for it to equal using styrofoam or those single use plastic things. This is a perfect scenario in which using what you already have is the most sustainable option. Maybe it's not perfect, like maybe it is plastic and you're putting it in something warm food and plastic, not ideal. Maybe it is glass and it could be breakable, also not ideal. But I just, I don't know if this is actually worth it in the long run for the planet. I mean, they are really cute and mine do get a lot of use out of them. But I don't think that if I were assessing what was the best option for the planet today, I probably, I, I probably wouldn't buy them. Another one I have been using for years is this right here. This is a Pila case and it kind of matches my wallpaper back there and I'll go show you real quick. You know, I'm quite literally obsessed with this wallpaper in this room and nobody else in my life even likes it. <laughs> This pumpkin still being here is for two reasons. Number one, it is still fall. It is barely fall in Texas. Actually, it's still probably in the 80s outside today, but it is fall. It is not winter. It is not the holiday or Christmas season yet for me. So the pumpkin, it stays. The second reason is that I thrifted this table and it's actually an outdoor table. And in order to kind of hide that, uh, I covered the hole that's meant for an umbrella with said pumpkin, so it stays. Okay, compostable phone cases. So I've been using, I'm pretty sure exclusively, I have not used anything other than a compostable phone case. These are specifically the ones I've been using are from Pila for over six years now. And before I started using compostable phone cases, I was using LifeProof and OtterBox. Like those are the two that I had used before because I think there's something to be said for quality over quantity. Like if you're gonna use a phone case that's not made of sustainable materials, it makes sense to buy something that is supposed to be like super durable, super long lasting so that you embody the idea of quality versus quantity. When I tell you that these cases are better than my LifeProof case, I'm not kidding. I literally had a life proof case on my iPhone before I had immediately before I bought a compostable case I dropped my phone the case came open and my phone fell on the floor and my screen detached from my phone that is how much I think these cases are better and superior to life proof OtterBox. I have not broken a single screen since starting to use Pila phone cases. And I think I've only had like a handful over the years of having, I think during that time I've had three different phones. Maybe I've had six different cases. Pila cases are actually made from a waste product. So it's like a, a waste product of the agricultural industry. It's not like they're growing materials specifically to make Pila cases. They used to tell me exactly what their, their patent was before it was patented. And then other big companies kind of 
stole what they were doing and started doing it and that's always bothered me. But back in the day, you can, I, actually I can fully say this because this is public on a podcast I did with their CEO years ago. Uh, it's made from a waste product. And so it virtually, like even in terms of its environmental footprint before it makes it to you, it's relatively small because it's made out of something that would otherwise be wasted. So in terms of preserving your phone, making it last as long as it can, in terms of it being a high quality product, in terms of its environmental footprint, I think Pila phone cases, not the other brands who stole their patent from a small business, Pila is still a small business and giant conglomerates have stolen it. Never mind. I digress. I definitely think Pila phone cases are worth it. And I do have a discount code with them. I'll link it below. But um, what do you, okay. And also tell me what you think about this wallpaper. It doesn't matter because I'm obsessed with it. It's staying, but I am curious what you think. Okay, on to the next one. One thing that I think is always gonna be worth it is sustainable makeup. And you know what I'm realizing as I'm going throughout this video? I think the consistent theme is if you're gonna keep something long term, it's obviously the most sustainable option. And so if you're able to keep something for a long time, then like, yeah, buy the sustainable option when you're going to replace stuff. Because when it comes to makeup, this is my little like capsule makeup, if you will. This is all I use on my face these days. Um, foundation obviously but like just this and the thing about makeup is when you choose to support a sustainable brand when you eventually work through all the makeup you have which will take so long to use up if you guys didn't know I used to dumpster dive on this channel and the most popular place to dumpster dive the, the place that got the most views was um Ulta's dumpster. So for so many years, I had so much makeup to work through before I could buy anything. And then after I finished up all of those things and I finally decided to invest in like a late, this is their um, compact capsule thing. I haven't bought anything since then. <laughs> so basically I just feel like, you know, they say powders expire. I think that's bullshit. I also don't wear makeup every day and I'm not like makeup, I don't wanna say obsessed, but like I don't love doing makeup. Like it doesn't, it's not a form of expression for me. Whereas I know for a lot of people it definitely can be. So I understand that maybe like just this very simple basic capsule, maybe not for you. Um, but there are other brands that sell things like not in like big compacts, you know, because really at the end of the day, those big compacts that would that this would normally come packaged in is just waste. And if you can just get what you'll actually use and need and put it in palettes like this, that's also a really sustainable option. When it comes to a lot of the ingredients used in these cosmetics, there are a lot of minerals that go into it that are like, again, like a common theme throughout this video is the mining that goes into these materials and that not a lot of people talk about. Aside from like literally tearing up the earth and extracting resources from it, why was that ever made legal? Why was someone ever allowed to own the earth just to destroy it? Sidebar. The makeup industry is one of the biggest industries that you actually do have like so many choices. I do think it's something worth thinking about worth making a sustainable, intentional purchase when you buy makeup to buy from sustainable brands. But yeah, I'd love to hear your experience with makeup and beauty because I feel like in the last few years, uh, this like era of the market has come a really long way. And I'll leave a link below to a blog post where I put some sustainable makeup brands in it and you can check out some other ones. I feel like back in the day when I used to get stuff out of the dumpster, it didn't feel gross to me and I was like totally fine to talk about how I took something out of a trash can and put it on my face. I mean, I cleaned them and I've been using them for years and I'm fine, you know what I mean? But I'd love to hear your opinion on makeup in general and specifically on if it's worth it. Talking about the makeup just actually reminded me of something that I wanna talk about. Um, and it's back in the bathroom, so we're just headed up there real quick. You know, I made it to the bathroom and realized I don't have any shampoo bars in here or in the other bathroom. They're in my suitcase. So we'll get them from there instead. Oh, ah, I did it. <laughs> I really wanted to talk about this shampoo bar specifically because I got a question the other day. Wow, you're really crooked, aren't you? I got a question the other day that was basically like, what do you do if you wanna switch back to like the things you used to use before you tried to live more eco-friendly because the things you used before were better. The quality like was better. I saw that comment and I thought this is a really good discussion to start like in the comments. I have two feelings about if you buy a shampoo bar, 
we'll talk about if I think it's worth it in a second. But if you buy these things that are like the more eco-friendly version of whatever you were using before, that's either like packaged in plastic, made with not great chemicals, ingredients, it has super high emissions, like palm oil, those sort of things in it, and you wanna to switch to something more sustainable, but it's just not quite as good. My first thought was we live in a hyper consumer society, right? There are quite literally probably hundreds of thousands of brands of shampoos in general, not just shampoo bars. But if we're talking like you went from using like Pantene to Lush shampoo bars and you thought about going back to Pantene because it, it worked better, there's always gonna be something better. There's something better than Pantene. There's something better than whatever's better than Pantene. And there's something better and better and better than that for you specifically too, right? Like we all have very different needs and what we think is better. And I think that when we get caught up in this idea of what the best is and trying to find what the best thing is, that's like a never ending search. And I think that if we wanna get back to a truly sustainable like society, right? Something that can be sustained long-term. We just need to have something that does the job. <laughs> I understand if you try something and it breaks out your scalp and, or it doesn't, doesn't do the job, it doesn't get your hair clean and you feel like gross after using it. I completely sympathize with that sort of thing, but this chase after, uh, living under capitalism, and more importantly, hyper-consumerism, there's always something trying to market to you that is going to be better. There is always something else. At the end of the day, I think we're just presented with too many choices and we just need to like go back to the basics. So I have that one side that's like, there's always gonna be something better, just use what will get the job done. And on this other side, I'm like, just use whatever you want. <laughs> So specifically with the Pantene example, actually I don't know anything about uh, Pantene's like sustainability initiatives, but I know that there are big brands out there trying to do better um, using like recycled plastic and shit like that. They're still, they're still exploiting the planet, okay? It doesn't matter what you package your product in. If it's full of human right exploitation, we're not gonna call it sustainable, okay? It's called greenwashing. There are a million different ways for you to have a positive impact on the planet. And if having this one shampoo just like empowers you to do everything else you can to fight for the planet, to advocate for your community, to go out and change people's minds and hearts and fight the system that we are all currently living under that is the reason that true sustainability is so difficult. If washing your hair with Pantene, girl, gets you to do over here, to do activism, to actually change some shit, Fuck it, like that's all I have to say, fuck it. I used to be all over here where it was like, I would sacrifice, and I still will, sacrifice a lot in the name of sustainability, right? Like I will change my habits and start doing things that make me really uncomfortable and I'm not super like happy with, but in the name of helping the planet, like that's who I've been for so long. And I'm really starting to be more over here where it's like, I'm allowed to do things that empower me to keep going in the movement and fighting against things that are systemically wrong with this world. And I think we have to do both, right? So that's why I came up with this saying, do your best and advocate for the rest. Because I think we get so caught up in semantics about like, what is going to change the world and save the world? Is it gonna be companies, governments, individuals? I don't think there's any either or. I think it is all encompassing. <laughs> all of that to say, is a shampoo bar worth it? That's up to you. I don't think I can tell you if I think these are worth it or not. Personally, I use plain shampoo in my bathroom. Shampoo bars are fine. A lot of people swear by them. This is a conditioner bar and my soap, and I usually have a, another shampoo bar in here as well. For when I travel, I keep them in stasher bags and I travel with them like this. That's really the only time anymore I use a shampoo bar because for me, they're just not as clarifying as I prefer. I like my hair to be squeaky clean, <laughs> unfortunately. But you tell me if you think shampoo bars are worth it and if you have any insight on like the discussion I just kind of opened up because I, I am very two ways about it and I think it's just a balance and it, the, every choice is gonna be different for every person and as much as I care about being an individual that cares about the planet and doing my best and advocating for the planet and its well-being, we also have to be like happy and satisfied in this world. Thank you so much for watching. I'm, I'm glad I made this video today. It was very gloomy outside. As I'm making this, it's actually getting to be quite nice. So I might go sit on my back porch and start editing maybe something else. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me today. I do wanna give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, which is Who Gives a Crap? They've been a partner on this channel for so long, not as long as I've been using them. Okay, I started using them long before they started being a sponsor of this channel. But as someone who has been using them for around six years, I highly, highly recommend, and there's a discount for you at the top of the description. And remember until next time, do your best.
and advocate for the rest. Bye, guys.